We're going to check in now on the debate about genetically modified foods. Chances are you eat them all the time. We were told some years ago that Ottawa was studying the health effects on Canadians. Wait till you hear what happened. And now that human drugs and vaccines are being developed in plants, could they accidentally end up on your dinner table? The CBC's Kelly Crow has this feature story. I just say no to the GMO. Something's fishy about this tomato. Don't you know it's a GMO? We feel the opportunities of this technology far outweigh any perceived or actual risk. Any politician who tells you these products are safe and that is known through scientific testing is either very, very stupid or they're lying. Genetically modified plants, a blessing or a curse? It's an argument that has raged for 10 years. All the while, the plants themselves have been quietly flourishing on millions of farms all over the world. They are plants born in a laboratory where scientists cracked open their DNA and inserted new genes from unrelated species. When the first seeds were planted, there was no fanfare just a few farmers taking advantage of new technology that promised to make their life easier. Today, more than 80% of Canadian canola, 30% of corn, and a quarter of the soybean crop is genetically modified. René Van Acker has spent 10 years watching this revolution in the fields, not as a cheerleader nor an opponent, but as a scientist concerned that the right questions are asked and answered. When we talk about this, uh, there's, there's a whole cohort of people that immediately shut us out and just say, oh, you're anti-GM. You know, we don't even want to hear anything because you're just anti-GM. And we're not. I'm not anti-GM. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've stated that, and over the last decade I've stated it thousands of times. But we're not anti-GM. We're saying, look, Yes, move forward on the technology, but there are going to be some problems. Let's deal with those problems so we don't kill the rest of the technology. Anything with soybeans in it is a threat. It wasn't until the first GM crops went to market that the controversy began. Were these new plants safe to eat? The government regulator said yes. And today there are GM ingredients in much of the processed food on the grocery shelves. It's been 10 years of eating GM food with no obvious health problems, but not all the scientists are convinced that it's safe. Three years ago, a study in the journal Nutrition and Health concluded, much more scientific effort and investigation is necessary before we can be satisfied that eating foods containing GM material in the long term is not likely to provoke any form of health problems. In other words, even with GM ingredients in most processed food, scientists can't say for sure that it's safe to eat. There's a little bit of evidence that it might be harmful. There's other evidence that shows that it's not harmful. Uh, but there's very few studies overall. I mean, you have a handful of studies on both sides. And as a scientist, you know, balancing information and the science-based approach, you'd have to say, I don't have enough information. Health Canada did announce back in 2002 that it would watch the Canadian population for signs of health problems from eating GM food. I think it's just prudent and what the public expects that um, we will keep a careful eye on the health of Canadians. But when we checked back for this story, we found that Health Canada had abandoned that research less than a year later, saying it was too difficult to put an effective surveillance system in place. So at this point, there is little research into the health effects of genetically modified food. So will we ever know for sure? Is it safe? I don't know. You know, those studies are still not being funded. Um, and and uh, sometimes people say, well, in North America, you know, we're just, it's just one big experiment and we're all part of it. If GM crops are an experiment, the evidence so far suggests it's difficult to control a gene once it's out there in nature. And over the last 10 years, GM critics have had lots of chances to say, I told you so. 
The most famous story, Starlink corn, the gene that was not approved for human food, but somehow ended up in taco shells and other corn intended for human consumption. It was hard to get rid of. Even several years later, the gene was still mysteriously showing up in corn. Another example of genes on the loose, GM canola, growing where it wasn't planted and wasn't wanted. And now it contaminates almost the entire Canadian canola crop. Some experimental GM pigs were accidentally rendered for animal food in Canada. Some other experimental GM pigs accidentally ended up in human food in the U.S. And just this summer, another kind of GM corn not yet approved was accidentally planted and then accidentally shipped to Europe. Last month, U.S. officials announced that a form of GM rice was unintentionally released. And U.S. scientists have just discovered that an experimental GM grass designed for better golf greens has escaped into the wild. So far, none of the incidents have posed a human health threat. But what if the genes had contained dangerous drugs or toxic chemicals? Because one day, they will. It's the next generation of GM plants, designed to be tiny drug factories, making human vaccines, proteins, drugs, industrial chemicals, even plastics, in the leaves of plants. Stephen Yarrow at the Federal Canadian Food Inspection Agency will be responsible for approving this new generation of GM plants. And our concern uh, about that uh, uh, future on the horizon is that it's very important that those types of, of plants are kept completely uh, separate from the food and feed production systems. But the question is how to keep them separate when experience has already shown that genes escape. I mean, the whole food system is at stake. If we start, you know, cavalierly putting these things into food and feed plants, you know, without uh, a decent plan for containment uh, or, or without really understanding how one contains these species. Research is showing that plants are difficult to contain. Here, a scientist is studying alfalfa, some of it growing as a crop in the field and some of it growing wild in the ditch, where the seeds can survive for 70 years. A problem if those seeds contain a dangerous drug or chemical. Government officials say they're asking industry not to use food plants to grow drugs. Well, we're waiting to see uh, uh, what develops, but uh, we are consulting with the industry. Um, certainly urging them not to use uh, some of the basic uh, feed and food uh, producing crops such as canola and, and corn and so on. So we'll, we'll have to see uh, what the industry um, uh, develops and in what types of, of plants that they wish to, uh, to put these type of traits into. But there is no law to prevent the use of food crops and in the U.S. most of the field trials have used corn and there has already been a mistake. An experimental plot of corn modified to grow a human hepatitis vaccine accidentally showed up in soybeans headed for market. Why are we doing this? Why would somebody choose corn to do that? Really bad idea, you know? Uh, why would they put it in a food or feed crop? Well, they're doing it because it's, it, they can. It's easy. It's easy to do in corn because they have the systems in place. And it's cheap. You know, it makes the production very, very cheap. Well, yeah, but what's the risk? The risk is huge. At the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, Stephen Yarrow says there should be a public debate about this future of molecular farming. We're changing the nature of, of agriculture with these types of advances, or potentially could be. Uh, and I think it's very important that uh, Canadians understand uh, uh, on the risks and, and the benefits of, of this type of technology before uh, it, it becomes advanced. Ten years ago, a revolution began with a canola plant. Today, there are genetically modified glowing zebra fish, fast-growing salmon, GM pigs, and plants that make human proteins and drugs. So far, none of these second-generation GM products have been approved for the marketplace, but they are coming. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Toronto.